Excuse me. I can't seem to find any information on this artist in the Iris family archives. The photo you provided also doesn't show any matches. Hmm, just as I thought. I'd like to ask, what kind of traces do people leave when they enter a dream? Are you referring to the records when you enter the dream pool? The equipment will monitor physiological indicators, such as heart rate, blood oxygen levels, and body temperature in real time. This data will be included in statistics and handed over to the family for the screening of any data anomalies. Immediate action will be taken once any illegal behavior is detected. I apologize. The hotel does not have access. This information is managed by the Bloodhound family. We can only gain access if there's a problem. Looks like nothing can be found here. At least we know who to look for next. We can ask the Bloodhound family for information. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Allie. By the way, is Miss Robin doing fine? We are looking forward to her performance. Fine? What does that mean? Is there something wrong with Miss Robin? The preparations for the Charmony Festival have been proceeding smoothly, so I guess things are pretty good. I believe she will be able to put on a spectacular show for all of you. Hmm, I'm sure. Sure enough, no one knows about Miss Robin. I'm not surprised. But that Miss Firefly is truly mysterious. There's no information on her in the hotel system. Even if she's a stowaway, she should have a disguised identity after entering the planet. She's also in the running for the legacy. How is she going to sneak into the dreamscape unnoticed? Uh, is there any other way to enter a dream? Besides the hotel room's dream pool? The memo keepers have abilities that are difficult for normal people to comprehend. In the memory zone of Peniconi, they thrive effortlessly, a fact proven to us by Black Swan. The hacker girl from the Stellaron Hunters used extraordinary means to unlock the Dreamscape Hotel's seal. According to the scene witnessed by him, it is likely that they are behind Miss Firefly's case. The Garden of Recollection and the Stellaron Hunters. Both are possible. But what about the IPC? Since they want Peniconi all for themselves, they're bound to have a plan. Huh. Who are you guys? The Bravo team has arrived at their designated position. Ready to execute armed evacuation operation. Fox, get moving! Uh, uh, armed evacuation? Boss, aren't you drunk? What do you know? It's more efficient this way. Just don't let the director find out. Act first, report later. Understood. Help! Help me! I spent all my year-end bonus on the snowball! I don't want my name on the department's major disciplinary notice! Hey, check it out! That place! Could it be the IPC workers from Bellabog? To all guests, the IPC will be conducting special operations within the hotel. Please follow the staff in charge of evacuation to the designated safe zones, or compulsory measures will be enforced. <sighs> I'll request a beating for you lot! You've been told not to drink during work hours. <sighs> Take him back to the hotel room. I'll organize a meeting later to properly go over how this incident report should be written. Miss Topaz? I never thought I'd run into you on Peniconi. <sighs> oh, long time no see, Astral Express crew. Adventurine has told me a lot about your happenings. Huh? <sighs> it's fine. Do as they ask and try to avoid any conflicts with the family. Report to me before taking any action. <sighs> Yes, all right. As you see, 
The IPC isn't very popular here on Penacony. Cordiality from the family is a mere facade. The former Frontier prison has turned around and cuffed its shackles on the IPC staff now. Only a Venturine, who carries an invitation, is allowed to attend the banquet. An entourage like us, we can only sit around in the Reality Hotel, unauthorized to even enter dreams. No wonder a Venturine's scrambling to partner up with someone. The IPC can't back him up in the dreamscape. <sighs> His situation isn't optimistic, I hear. You're all helping to investigate some dirt on the family, are you not? Let me know if you need anything outside the dreamscape. The IPC always treats its partners well. Thank you, Miss Topaz. We're on our way to the Hounds to verify some intel. Perhaps you've had dealings with them? <laughs> yep. They're tailing us right now. Why not go and talk to them? They don't take the spotlight off me. Being constantly stared at is really uncomfortable. How does it feel to be in business with a Venturine? I bet you're not used to it. That's just his style. Ball or nothing is his mantra. He's always cozying up to his clients while egging them on to undertake some dangerous assignment with him. But everyone has their merits, so I won't comment further. But Venturine's luck has always been good. He's always closed all his cases without a hitch and basically never lost a gamble. Which is why, on the issue of retaking Panna County, I'm watching with keen interest. <sighs> of course. It's business, after all. What's important is where you're seated at the table. And as for the two cases, apologies, but I don't have much info on them either. All I can do is ask you to keep digging for more details. Please, continue to investigate the case. All I can do is sit tight in the real world. I look forward to hearing your progress. We're carrying out our captain's orders. What, what do you want? We made a mistake last time, and we're working hard to rectify it now. We don't have time for anything else. Surveilling the IPC executive Topaz, ensuring that she stays put at the Reverie Hotel during her time on Panacone. We've got the right one this time. So that's it. They were the pair who were after Firefly at the time. It's you again. Back for more trouble? We're not afraid of you this time. Well, spit it out. Stop bothering us if you've nothing important. So you know each other. Uh, why do you keep running into people you've beaten up before? That's right. We're investigating a murder for the family. Can we speak to your captain about the case? Oh, uh, well... Hey! The security officer instructed everyone to shut their traps before he returned from Dream's Edge. What murder? You'd better stop spouting nonsense. That's right. We have nothing to report. Please leave. Looks like they're not going to cooperate. But they did at least tell us that the captain is at Dream's Edge. Why don't we just look for the security officer then? It's probably Gallagher, the one he mentioned, right? We... We have nothing to report. Please, leave. Oh, such tight security. I bet they're stumped by the case as well. Uh, Gallagher... Gallagher... Uh, where could he be? Just as I thought... <sighs> Apologies. The Bloodhound family is running an investigation up ahead. No unauthorized personnel allowed. Hold on a minute... I think I've seen you before. The, the gray-haired one. How much trouble have you stirred up exactly on Penacony? Not possible. 
It was you the last time, yelling about some clockwork friendship while beating me up with that silver-haired girl. Uh, uh. I'm not letting you get by this time. Please leave, or I'll have to get on my knees and beg you. Huh? What kind of heinous crime have you committed now? Hold on, sir. We have documents authorized by the family that would aid your investigation. If it wouldn't trouble you, could we see this Mr. Gallagher? Who exactly is this Gallagher you keep talking about? There have been a few people mentioning this name. Even the one with the gray hair. Uh, he didn't send you all here? It was the security officer who dispatched us? That's all I can divulge. Uh, he'll do! He's the one we've been looking for! <sighs> Sorry, no can do. The boss said that since it's a matter of the family's reputation, no one's allowed through. Everyone, please leave! There's really no need for us to make things difficult for each other, right? We're really sorry for troubling you. <sighs> Let's think of another way. Another way? Uh, that's it! Didn't they say something about that... Uh, what was it? Clockwork? That got this guy to change his mind? Can you perform it again? That... Uh, clocky magic! Please? <sighs> Sorry, no can do. The boss said that since it's a matter of the family's reputation, no one's allowed through. Everyone, please leave. <sighs> There's really no need for us to make things difficult for each other, right? See what time it is now. Whoa, it's this time already. What? <laughs> time to clock out, and no one's gonna stop me. Uh, what? Huh? <laughs> uh, this clockwork trick of yours, it's kind of dangerous. At least he won't be getting in our way again. Let's go find that Gallagher and ask him the intricacies of the case. I was wondering what all the commotion was. Huh. Oh, it's you guys. Welcome. Since you made it here, what can I do for you? Hello, Mr. Gallagher, sir. Judging from your tone, it sounds like you were expecting us. Ha ha ha. Miss Himako, you're too polite. There's no need to call me sir. Mr. Gallagher, you even know my name. Of course I do. You folks are from the legendary Astral Express and honorable guests of the Watchmaker. I had an encounter with this gentleman in the Golden Hour. I remember that little silver-haired girl was there too. I'm sorry for what happened to that kid. This is also the reason why we've come to visit you, Mr. Gallagher. The Express can't just overlook the death of that child. So we've decided to help the family get to the bottom of it, in the hopes of getting justice for her. The Nameless involved with the family. What an unpredictable twist of fate. Why? What's wrong with the family? Uh, it's nothing. On Penicone, everyone loves the family. No matter how much one resists the beautiful dream, when the time comes, they too will find it hard to let go. Who wants to leave a warm nest? Just idiots, little kids, and inebriated fools. Mr. Gallagher seems to be getting at something. Well, you got it wrong. I'm not. You want to discuss the case? Sure, come with me. This is not a good place to talk. Let's go elsewhere. Even after that 
chilling tragedy, this dream is still running effortlessly. Other than the family of the Harmony, it's hard to imagine any other power in the universe that could sustain a building of such magnitude. The family itself is a huge, perfect building. Like a living idol. Each member of the family sees themselves as a piece of the divine puzzle, revolving around a singular core and a shared ideal. Under their command, they loyally fulfill their roles, offering themselves while also receiving sustenance in return. Interesting analogy. Perhaps that's why Pinnacone's beautiful dream has persisted for so long. But the human body has its limits, and so does the divine's. That doesn't sound like the kind of comment a Galaxy Ranger would make. Just pointing out the facts. Mr. Yang will definitely have a better sense of what's going on than I do. Why do you say that, Miss Acheron? The beautiful dream is crumbling. But not because of a particular eon, a particular faction, or a particular visitor. Its collapse stems from a certain inevitability of human nature. The family refuses to acknowledge this, and it has ultimately backfired and become a catalyst. As people immerse their souls in the dreamscape, where consequences and pain cease to exist, and only ease and pleasure prevail, they draw closer and closer to necrosis. Regardless of the perceived bliss, death looms as the inevitable conclusion. Also, this necrosis will diffuse and spread, one piece of the puzzle's mutation will eventually cause the entire building to shake, break, and crumble. In the end, the dreams that people built in the name of freedom became the cage that imprisoned them. I'm sure you've gained a lot from this trip, Miss Acheron. Are you willing to share your findings with me? Of course. That's if I remember. <sighs> Don't mind me, it's just a habit. Owing to events in the past, I've become easily... forgetful. It's only when this sword is unsheathed that those hazy memories start to become clearer. Take your time. <laughs> that should do it. I vividly remember everything that occurred on Penacony. Ask away. The moment of daybreak. I've heard that's where the Dawn Factory, which processes the foundation of the dreamscape, is located. Behind the dreamscape's song and dance stand many imagination factories. Workers create all kinds of whimsical works day in and day out in their dreams. Then they return to reality and sleep on a narrow bed in a room. A far cry from luxury. They say it will suffice. Experiencing the bizarre and motley dreamscape is the best reward. There I encountered a young woman who had just come of age. The perfect time to indulge in beautiful dreams. Her greatest wish was to one day move to the golden hour and see the magnificent garments she had woven with her own hands. For certain reasons, her wish was difficult to fulfill. But I managed to bring her a garment. Gilded Hour. It's said to be Penacone's currency center. Yes. It is a fortress-like financial city, the economic heart of the dreamscape. The Papeshi people of the Alfalfa family are there to keep it running, sending blood that is made from money everywhere on Penacone. Everyone there is exquisitely dressed and always in a hurry. The greatest wish of the local Papeshi people is for their future generations to work in the Gilded Hour. I've never met anyone who is willing to talk. I could only stand at the crossroads, watching crowds of people hurrying like the wind through the jungle of steel, only to deposit the alfalfa credits that they'd earned into the bank's vault. I don't know if they would open the vault door, but before I left, I witnessed a well-dressed Papeshi person plummet from the sky, while those around him continued on their way, unfazed. 
I hear the blue hour is very romantic. Do you have any tales to share? Perhaps Mr. Yang has heard. There is a large boat called the Aventide, anchored along the Sea of Dreams, where soft music and dancing persists endlessly every night. I ran into a wizened lady there. She was at the dock, waiting for her long-departed lover to return, waiting for countless hours within time that stood still. In the humid sea breeze, she spoke of her own youth. Like many who desired wealth and love, they came to Panacone to pursue their dreams. Alas, her lover's consciousness was lost in the dark depths of the Sea of Dreams. Finally, she suggested we continue our conversation on a boat in the shallows. I agreed and boarded the boat with her. But she never said anything. Her eyes absent-mindedly gazing at the horizon for what seemed like forever. Finally, we retreated to the beach. The dreamscape of chic, luxury, and consumerism, the moment of dusk. My companions have been there too. Then you all must have seen those who are attempting to realize their dreams. Or have realized them. Scattering money as if it were dust and betting it on all or nothing. Everything has a price. And everything can be bought or sold. Even dreams themselves. I saw an Intellitron there, who was preparing to auction himself. When someone wins a bid, under stipulated periods and rules, he would do the buyer's every bidding, becoming that person's very possession. That Intellitron had been auctioned off a dozen times, and I participated in his 13th. That was the grandest banquet I had ever attended. But never again did anyone cast another glance at him. This time around, there were no successful bids for him. This is what I've seen and heard along the way. Someone once said to me, Panacone wasn't like this a long time ago, nor should it be. I've traveled through the reality and dreamscape of the planet of festivities, watched the tides of night rise and fall when time stopped for people, where the spirits of the rich and impoverished remain forever fixed on their own scales. This is why I think the collapse of the beautiful dream is inevitable. There might be a way to change everything. Perhaps. But if this is indeed the world that people desire, if this is precisely why life chooses to slumber, should we still seek to change it? <sighs> Miss Acheron, now it's my turn to share a story with you. There was a man from my homeland who, at a time when the world was grappling with deep, unhealable pain, made a choice. He wove together the dreams of everyone in the world, linking people's dreamscapes, and shouldered this burden himself. From this, he created a giant, a spiritual Adam. And since that moment, the giant stood between heaven and earth, becoming the pillar of the world's existence. As a price, those who found it hard to move forward, who could not advance, forever lost their future. They slumbered in a dream, devoid of disaster and pain, living out their days peacefully in the man's created utopia. And it is because of the wishes of those people who wished not to awaken that this spiritual Adam became unbreakable. And yet, you stand here right now, which also means that man failed. Because people must always move towards the future. Even if human weaknesses make them pause when they truly cannot move forward, Humanity will eventually seek a way to save itself. And that man, he was never a failure. 
like everyone in that world, he etched the possibilities of human nature into his heart. He was the sun chaser of legend, soaring towards the sky and embracing his final victory with his fall. He ascended to heights uncharted, only to come face to face with the sun, a place not visited by anyone before. His wings would melt because of it, only for him to fall into the sea. And after that, countless others would surpass him, soaring to even greater heights. A fitting metaphor for the Nameless's trailblazing spirit. Thank you, Mr. Yang. I know what you wish to confirm. The universe has innumerable similar yet different worlds. In these worlds, there are innumerable people who look alike yet don't. I too have embarked on journeys, encountering old friends with familiar faces on different worlds, witnessing their destinies follow paths similar to mine. So I will tell you, even if not completely similar, the story you just told, it overlaps with my past and within that abyssal dream. I ended that man's life alone. <sighs> I am not who you think I am, nor will my home be as fortunate as your world. I am sorry. It's fine. I don't mind, so long as I can alleviate your suspicions. There's something I still wish to know, Miss Acheron. Under that representation of the hunt, exactly what sort of power is it that has motivated your solitary journey thus far? Mr. Yang, before answering that question, I wish to continue the previous topic. I like your analogy very much. Indeed, birds are born to fly, but in a distant past, their ancestors could only gaze at the sky in envy. They saw that faraway ray of light from above the heavens, piercing through the clouds and blanketing the earth. And so, time and time again, generation after generation, the birds spread their wings and took to the sky, attempting to touch its ceiling, all because the sun was there. Then, what if the last bird finally soars into the sky, only to realize that the end of the light is not the sun, but darkness? Then why, exactly, do we even walk towards the light? Time no see. Having fun on Pentacone? Acheron. This voice. It's not Constance. Could it be her companion? Though I don't know exactly what you are, or what you're up to, my bullets will find you. Until then, you best find a casket store on Pentacone and ask the owner to reserve a good quality casket for you, imposter. Imposter? I see. She gave my whereabouts to someone who's tracking Acheron, too. Who are you? Huh? Uh, did I make a mistake? <laughs> uh, who the heck are you? I'm the Garden of Recollections memo keeper. <laughs> Not bad. This is the kind of tough challenge I like. You that imposter's bodyguard? <laughs> Never mind. <sighs> it's fine. I'll leave a round for you. So get that forehead clean and wait for me. I don't know what you're talking about, but you know Acheron, the Galaxy Ranger, yes? I have something to ask you. <laughs> Are you 
you asking me to write your will? Sure. Go ahead. Not quite. I only want to ask, how exactly did she become a Galaxy Ranger? <sighs> She's clearly not a path strider of the hunt, but you are, aren't you? Tell me, what's Acheron's deal? <laughs> sure. Heck, never thought I'd come across an ally. What a stroke of luck. Oh, well... <laughs> I'll be on Penacone soon. Uh, memo Keeper, go buy a bottle of his Donna's White Oak and warm it up. And I'll raise a glass to you. That lady's past. <laughs> Well, nobody knows. But if all you want is a simple answer, sure, you best get a chair and take a seat. That woman, named Acheron, is an emanator who should not exist. <laughs> you look... Hail, or is that also part of your act? <laughs> I didn't think you'd have the nerve to show yourself. I thought this was exactly what you wanted. After all, I faithfully fulfilled my duties as you instructed. Just tell me if you can't hold on any longer. So... The genius of the Council of Mundanites wants to be my undertaker now. <laughs> my, what an honor. Yes, and I'm pretty sure the people at the Strategic Investment Department would love to be notified of your death in due time. But let's not forget, you won't be seeing them, because I'm the manager of this task. Great. Then tell your people that Aventurine is ready to go in 17 system hours. Oh, you've got a lot of nerve. How exactly do you plan on completing your task while your hands are tied by the Harmony? My conversation with Sunday convinced me that there's a traitor in the family. And that they hold the secrets of Penacone. So, I took the opportunity to set everything in motion. I even managed to recover the gift money. <laughs> Things haven't gone this smoothly since I walked through the doors of the Reverie. Now I'm only one step away from victory. Let's just wait and see. Sounds like a very elaborate way of saying that you failed. <laughs> That's all I can say. Have you forgotten, Doctor? You betrayed me. Go. Do what you must. I look forward to the sight of the IPC fleet surrounding Panacone. You've achieved what you desired, haven't you? That's true, but what's your plan? Did you conceal an orbital support beacon in that gift money bag? Well, who knows? Maybe that's why I'm handing out cash, even when I'm about to bite the dust. You are indeed a gambler. An insane one, at that. Well, maybe I am. Who knows? <sighs> Fine. Here, take this. Open it when you're on your last legs. You'll thank me. What's this? Medical advice? <laughs> you catch on pretty fast, Doctor. <laughs> Asking me to solve a case without giving a single clue. How typical of you. Wouldn't get it, scoundrel. But the way you're all on edge about that stowaway... <laughs> it's just as I guessed it would be. 
As for now, let the rain of wealth from the IPC fall evenly on everyone. Would you be willing to support my performance? And keep the song of beauty alive in the cosmos? Wow, how fabulous! But why would you give such a wonderful gift to a random stranger like me? Well, you see, I can't bear to see anyone in this sweet dream suffering from poverty. That's incredibly kind of you. Thank you so much, sir. If you ever get the chance, please, feel free to come by and indulge in my singing. <laughs> sure thing. Oh, by the way, do you happen to know anything interesting about death? Death? That's a pretty scary topic, and it doesn't really match the mood of this sweet dream. <laughs> oh, you see, I'm a tabloid reporter collecting ghost stories in Panicone. <laughs> As you know, the more chilling the stories, the more attention they get. <laughs> Maybe you could help me out. Well, if you're up for some gossip, it's not about death, but there have been some rumors about a guest at the Reality Hotel who fell into a deep sleep and didn't wake up. It was like they were in some sort of coma. Nobody knows what caused it, but luckily the customer eventually regained consciousness. Well, all customers are under the protection of the family, after all. <laughs> Thank you. This will make for a very juicy headline. May Shibe protect us? Unexplained coma. <laughs> That's actually what happens to your body if your brain dies in a dream. But unfortunately, the customer ended up waking up in the end. <sighs> I can feel something inside my head. Is the harmony starting to kick in? Would you be willing to support my performance? And keep the song of beauty alive in the cosmos? Uh, the world has truly lost its way. You. Wait. I get it now. This is some sort of prank show, right? You must have some camera set up around here to film yourself doing good deeds, right? You youngsters are always looking for a quick way to get an audience. But you know what? A truly great show never comes easy. Oh, a great show will start soon, old man. But before that, I need to ask you something. Do you know where I can find death in this dream? Ah, I see. Another fearless youngster looking for death, huh? Well, let me give you a piece of advice. Don't think you're the first one who's ever thought of that idea. Death? Not even remotely innovative. I bought it from Dr. Edward. He claimed it was some exclusive fancy schmancy stuff. Now, oh, what a disappointment. The effects were awful. First, some monster covered in eyes stabs you in the gut. And then all you see are blurry glimpses of buildings and lights. Oh, the sky was spinning so fast it almost made me puke. Is that all? Yeah. What else can you expect? Don't put too much stock in the Penacone movie industry. They even call this junk groundbreaking art. Can you believe it? <laughs> what a joke. Well, I'll leave you be then. I hope you have a wonderful day. A monster covered in eyes. That sounds like the memory zone meme. But buildings and lights... I don't think those have anything to do with death. Oh, that whole dream bubble was probably created using rumors and gossip. <sighs> ah, the disturbing voice in my head. <sighs> it's getting closer. Uh, 
The world has truly lost its way. Take care, my friend. If you ever find yourself in danger, remember that the hounds are always ready to help. <sighs> You don't look good, my friend. If you need assistance, I can contact the hotel and have them wake you up forcefully. That won't be necessary. I have some business to attend to. But thank you all the same. All right, then. If you ever need help, don't hesitate to reach out to us hounds. Well, actually, I do need a favor. As the most outstanding... Standing hound in Panacone. Have you come across any stowaways recently? Stowaways? How could there be stowaways in Panacone? We've never had anything like that before. <laughs> All right. Good luck with your work then. Uh, what was I even thinking? Family would never share intel with the IPC. <laughs> Uh, uh, does everyone have to go through so much torment before joining the family? Uh, darn it! <laughs> now I just want to dig out my brain and use it as evidence. Take care, my friend. If you ever find yourself in danger, remember that the hounds are always ready to help. A sip of liquor. A blissful reprieve to drown a thousand sorrows. Let worries leave. <laughs> I know I have what it takes to become a poet. Oh? <laughs> you? You're giving these gems to me? Didn't expect to meet such a generous soul in this place. <laughs> or are you just pitying me? Well, it really doesn't matter. As long as I have Soul Glad, that's enough. This is just a dream, after all. <laughs> you really shouldn't drink so much Soul Glad, my friend. It's not good for your health. Oh? <laughs> Maybe I really should quit. But not before meeting the Devil of Soul Glad. <laughs> The Devil of Soulglad? Care to elaborate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a seahorse with a long neck. They say it loves to appear to junk people, especially the ones who are passed out on the side of the road. <laughs> How funny. <laughs> yeah. Very funny indeed. Thank you. <sighs> a sip of liquor. A blissful reprieve. To drown a thousand sorrows. Let worries leave. <laughs> I know I have what it takes to become a poet. You want to talk to me? Sure. But nothing too sensitive, okay? Huh. Wealthy people have fancy ways to enjoy this dream. But to be honest, I've never seen anyone who gives out money to others like you. So, are you trying to be the prince from the tale, handing out his gold leaf garment and melting his lead heart in the fire? <laughs> I'm flattered. I'm no prince, and... I just thought these gems would help you speak. So, as an investigative reporter, maybe you've heard something about death? Ah, uh, another curious soul. I see. Well, that was actually the topic I was most into when I entered the industry. But my boss shut it down. Now did your boss talk you out of it? She simply said, covering baseless urban legends like that would make us look like some third-rate tabloid. I thought about it, and she had a point. Reporting on stuff like blowing out birthday candles and getting spooked by nightmare ghosts, 
isn't exactly professional material. Mm, guess she's got a point. Thank you for sharing. You want to talk to me? Sure, but nothing too sensitive, okay? Hmm. Oh, were you wanting to talk to me? Sorry, I thought you were checking out something behind me. Is this a gift for me? Are you sure this isn't some kind of mistake? Yes, it's for you. Just take it. Is this for real? Someone is actually giving me a gift. Not for my parents, but for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, oh, it's not much. I just want to ask you something. I knew it. What's on your mind? Are you trying to ask about my father or my mother? Um... Neither. I just wanted to know if you've ever heard about death in the dreamscape. Oh, you sound just like my father. Always warning me about danger, even in dreams. He's an Intellitron, so his dream entry methods are different from us organics. Can't count on him to protect me if something does go haywire. Funny, right now I'm still under his protection. <laughs> How ironic. Hey, stay positive. Gold will always shine one day, right? Hmm, the devil of soul glad. Dangers in the dream. And nightmare ghosts. Well, surely death is a popular topic in this sweet dream granted by the family. Well, I've collected a bunch of rumors, but no useful clues. Uh, the gems in my bag are running low. Well, let's see if my last lucky interviewee brings some surprises. Hmm. Were you wanting to talk to me? Sorry, I thought you were checking out something behind me. Remember what I said? You Sigonians are better off hiding in the sewers. Look at you, snooping around and sticking your nose everywhere. Is the smell of death? So enticing, my fine fellow. <laughs> oh, it's you, masked fool. I should have guessed it. You're the imposter who appeared on TV after Robin's death, right? I heard you got caught by the family. I gave you a clear clue. Befriend a mute. Simple and straightforward, you know? And what did you do? You messed it up and ended up as their prisoner. I told you to make friends with a mute, not become one yourself. You really let me down. What do you mean? You know better than I do. Who watched the little songbird that couldn't sing perish right before their eyes? You did, Blondie. Uh, no, I, I mean... What did you mean by becoming one myself? Well, it means you'll soon end up like her, unable to speak ever again. <laughs> but it's a good thing if you ask me, because... Because I'm getting closer to the truth, right? Oh? Why else do you think I'm handing out cheap trinkets all over the streets, fool? All part of the act. Fool's bait. The more pathetic I seem, the more likely you'll come sniffing around. So, now that I've drawn you out, will you reward me with an answer for my efforts? Why should I help you? Don't you want to see Panacone descend into... chaos? Well, I can make that happen. 
I just need an answer to one question. Back then, when you asked me to find a mute, did you really mean Robin? Hmm. And what if I say no? Then I'll thank you. <laughs> oh, the word no has never sounded so pleasing. <laughs> well done. I admit I underestimated you, but what difference would it make? Let me tell you something. There were two mutes, but one is dead now, and the other, though he's still in Penacony, I'm afraid you'll never find him again. Now I'm completely sure that I was on the right track from the beginning and never strayed, fool. Right now, there are only two things missing from my grasp. The meaning behind the truth, and the means to expose it. <laughs> How impressive. That's quite a fancy way of saying I haven't learned anything so far. Not exactly. I've gathered enough clues to prove its existence. And that's enough for me. As for the answers to my questions, I'll find them within 17, no, 16 system hours. Oh, really? Only 16 system hours? Well, let me lend you a hand. Here you go. This is my precious, mutually assured distraction button. And I have one just like it. When either of us presses it, the other and the whole of Panacone will go up in smoke. If you're really so desperate for the IPC to take over Panacone, blowing up the chessboard isn't a bad idea. Start from scratch. That's where the IPC excels, right? Just press the button when you're at your wit's end. And of course, feel free to reach out to me for my hospice care, too. Oh, a deadly button, huh? <laughs> well, I guess the family didn't take your threat seriously at all. Otherwise, how on earth did you manage to bring it in here? <laughs> I have my own ways. That's all you need to know. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'll have to decline your offer. Who knows if your little gadget will actually work. By the way, I have no plans to search for the other mute friend you speak of. But it's good to hear that he's still here in Panacone. I'll handle the rest myself. I'll orchestrate a grand finale for the downfall of the family. <laughs> and at the climax... The walls will crumble, people will wake up, and those who couldn't speak will find their voices again. When that time comes, go ahead, press the button, and light up the sky with a magnificent fireworks display for me. Catch you later, fool. <laughs> You're still talking big, but sure. If that happens, I'll stay true to my word. Just don't let me down now, okay? Hmm. So, number 35. You're back. Like your new lucky charm. Can a commodity code really be considered a lucky charm? Silence! I didn't give you permission to speak, you Sigonian hound. <sighs> the guys in black didn't say much, so I've no idea what you did to save your skin in that massacre back in the day. But I figured you must have had good luck, so I bought you. From now on, you and your good luck are my assets. <laughs> are we clear? 
Your first task is simple. In addition to you, I've purchased 30, uh, well, 34 other slaves. Go and play a game with them. <laughs> you came out alive after two days. It proves that you are the real deal. You're insane. <laughs> Testing out if you're a good product. Aren't you worried that the money you spent on me will go to waste? I've got stacks on stacks, Blondie. The slave market is never short of self-righteous brats like you. But you look good. And that's why many customers are betting their fortunes on a scrawny brat like you. So go along now and uh, don't let your master down. Uh, how much did you spend? What? My price. How much did you pay for me? Huh. You really want to know? Hmm. Well, it was 60 tanba. No more, no less. I'll take my chances. 30 tanba. If I come back alive, you'll give me 30 tanba. Deal? Are you trying to strike a bet with me? Oh, you've got some guts. Yeah, sorry, but uh, that won't do. Don't forget your place, slave. You're not qualified to be at the table. You're just a chip, a life thrown away in someone else's hands. Either you come back with more chips for your master, or you never come back. It's all or nothing. Don't embarrass me, my lucky hound. Huh. What brings you here, Gallagher? <sighs> Some friends from the old days. Do you have a moment to spare, Siobhan? Oh, I have the whole day to spare. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dream Jolt Hostelry. This bar offers a wide variety of drinks, but we draw the line at Soul Glad. Why settle for ordinary when you can experience extraordinary? We're dedicated to serving up nothing but pure joy and laughter. <laughs> what would you like to drink? I'll whip it up for you. Oh, look! A lady as cool as Sir Val. Who's Sir Val? Will you uh, introduce me to her? Huh? Oops! <laughs> She's heard us. Just spare them, my esteemed bartender. I'll take over the bar today. I'm getting up there in age, and I need some practice before I forget the skills that used to put food on my table. Uh, where did you stash the ingredients? They're all under the counter. Since our guests have traveled from afar, shouldn't you whip up some special drinks? That's exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> hey, my friends, do me a favor. Go around the bar and bring me any ingredients you fancy. The discussion might take quite some time, so I'll prepare some customized, non-alcoholic drinks for you. In the bar? But aren't all the ingredients right there on the counter? Why, we're in a dream, my lovely lady. You can help yourself to anything if you wish for it. Comfort, hunger, confusion, or even boredom. It's all within reach, right at your fingertips. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? She just called me my lovely lady. Even in reality, mixing drinks is more than just throwing ingredients together. A bartender needs to capture the bar's atmosphere, master technique, and spin a tale of mystery and anticipation. Only then can a perfect drink crafted with a customer's life story be created. In other words, what you get from your drink is down to luck. So don't overthink it. Indecisiveness has no place when it comes to enjoyment. And let me tell you, don't underestimate the bartenders of Pentagoni, especially not Gallagher. This guy is pure magic. 
He can satisfy even the pickiest of customers. Don't go easy on this old man. Give him a real challenge. That being said, mixing a drink is way simpler than you'd imagine. Just pick your favorite ingredients, toss them in a glass, mix it up, and it's done. So go ahead, explore the bar, and bring me any ingredients you prefer. Go ahead, my friend. I'm sure you'll find splendid ingredients. Uh, can this be used for mixing drinks? Oh, and there's a note underneath. Exchange with your precious things. Oh, what should we exchange for it? And who should we give our stuff to? Hey, what are you doing? You can't just throw trash. Uh, no way. The words on the note are changing. Happiness is the dream of the humble. Uh, does this mean we can take it? Something feels weird about this. Uh, hey, look at all these chips scattered everywhere. A few days ago, an actor from the Iris family came. Caused a ruckus with Siobhan. Those chips must have gotten scattered during all the chaos. <laughs> That's a clever metaphor. Uh, that being said, opening a bar in this place, filled with monsters, is quite a feat. Siobhan must have a lot of tricks up her sleeve, right? You'll have to ask her yourself to find out. But I have a feeling she won't budge unless you impress her with an incredible drink. Uh, check out this bottle. The liquid inside looks beautiful. And the label reads... Dream syrup. Thick. I don't see an expiration date. But the production date is... Half an amber era ago. Ugh, drinking this stuff can't lead to anything good. That's for sure. Ugh, the syrup is turned clumpy. I definitely don't want to drink this, even if it's not expired. Did you find the bottle of syrup I've been hoarding? Don't worry, it's all just a dream, and it won't upset your stomach. It's been aging for years and should have a refined taste by now. Feel free to have some. It's perfect for entertaining lovely guests like you. Ugh, then... We'll keep it, for now. It's Soul Glad! But I thought they didn't sell Soul Glad at the bar. <laughs> Let's give it a shake! Nice, it's still fizzy and has a long shelf life! <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Soul Glad is a classic in Penicone, and it'd be strange for a bar not to have it. Why don't they sell Soul Glad in this bar? Did something happen? It's all about the bartender's pride. It wouldn't make sense for customers to come here and order drinks they can find anywhere else. That's the mindset I use when I brew my coffee. Uh, <laughs> you're right, Himeko. Oh, that's quite a stash. Not sure if it's enough. Stay out of my way. I'm looking for Siobhan. Uh huh. What's all the commotion about? <sighs> Haven't I made myself clear enough, Miss Amaki? The Dream Jolt hostelry only welcomes guests who want to enjoy a drink to their heart's content. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested in your proposal. But you have the talent. You'll attract a huge audience. You're destined for the Iris stage, not for this rundown shack. Come with me. We'll become the talk of Panacone, a shining light into every corner of the dreamscape. Please, Siobhan, I really need you. <sighs> As you see, I'm entertaining my guests. Don't make me repeat myself. Fine. If you don't come along, I'll just sit here and not go anywhere else. Give me a sparkling drink. Sweet. With extra ice. 
Just... one moment. What's her deal? We can't discuss the case with other people hanging around the bar. Hey, can you do that clockwork trick of yours again? Time is running out. We need to hurry. Yeah, I'm counting on you. You're one of Siobhan's guests, right? What can I do for you? If you're here to convince me to leave, please stop it. I'll never leave until she accepts my proposal. I just don't get why she won't leave this place. This rundown shack with no customers whatsoever. who forced Siobhan into hiding here, running this pesky bar. It's all their dirty scheming. Huh. I get it now. She's not leaving because she doesn't want to run into them again. I, I can help clear the way for her. I can do her a favor. I'll go back and write a letter to the Dream Master, exposing the crimes committed by the Iris family. Siobhan will definitely appreciate it. Things might get out of control if she gets any angrier. I need to come up with another plan. I've seen it. The moment when Siobhan and I share the stage, the crowd is going wild, applause crashing like waves, the aroma of irises fills the air, a beautiful melody playing, ribbons dancing around us, and the taste is sweeter than honey. I've seen that scene countless times in my dreams, and every time it mesmerizes me. That's why I have to bring her back to that world, no matter what it takes. <sighs> Want to raise a glass, my attentive listener? Let's consider it a toast to my far-fetched dream. She's still not leaving. Maybe I'll have to try again. <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? Our paths were never meant to cross, yet I'm still holding on to her. I'm too timid and shy, longing to shine but afraid of stepping into the spotlight. I need her guidance because I'll never be able to do anything alone. You don't know Siobhan's past, and you have no clue how radiant she used to be. Even among the talented Iris family, her skill was unmatched. I know she probably thinks I'm just trying to ride her fame to get ahead. But all I want is for her to reclaim her place. Well, talking to you has got me feeling a bit down. My thoughts are swirling, making my mind clear and bringing tears to my eyes. Maybe I should find a place to reflect on what Siobhan truly means to me. Here's the payment for the drinks. Please, pass it on to her. I'm leaving now. Amaki has left? 
That's good for her. Radiant dreams may be enticing, but they're nothing more than dreams. Her drink is on the house. Please keep the money. When you're ready, go to Gallagher. <laughs> I can tell he's itching to show off his skills. That being said, mixing a drink is way simpler than you'd imagine. Just pick your favorite ingredients, toss them in a glass, mix it up, and it's done. So go ahead, explore the bar, and bring me any ingredients you prefer. Nice work. Let me take a look. You found some interesting ingredients there. Now, take your pick. Each drink has its own unique flavor, and the base ingredient sets the tone for the initial taste and the lingering aftertaste. So, which one would you like to use as the base? Sweeter than Susie juice and more bitter than dream syrup. Dream in a bottle. That's a metaphor for Penacone itself. Now that you've chosen the base, it's time to pick the adjunct. The ingredient that'll create a marvelous chemical reaction with the base. It should give an unforgettable taste without overpowering the main tone. So, what's your choice for the adjunct? This is the most pungent adjunct we have, and my personal favorite. Before Mikhail left, the wrinkles at the corners of his eyes had deepened like knife cuts. He mumbled, his breath too weak to climb up his throat, caught up in his chest. But I could smell it. The lingering scent of Penacone itself on that night. Mikhail. Almost there. Let's pick a decoration. Which style do you prefer? Anything you need, I've got it. The IPC's favorite. Hmm. Ambitious, aren't you? Well, it's done. Here's to you, seeker of truth, with this glass of farewell, my lovely. To unfinished business. <laughs> well done, Gallagher. You're not over the hill yet. <laughs> so are you satisfied? Oh, the flavors! They're way more sophisticated than Soul Glad. The richness and layers of these flavors are a masterpiece, especially with the adjuncts. I can taste the spicy and sour notes with a hint of sweetness. I'm not entirely sure what it all means. Maybe Mr. Gallagher can shed some light on it. <clears throat> well, if you're expecting a profound answer, I'm afraid I'll disappoint you. The imagery it implies is pretty straightforward. It's just a glimpse of what this dream truly tastes like. Nothing more. Does this true taste have anything to do with that, Mikhail? does sound familiar. When you got knocked out by that masked fool girl, I think I heard someone calling that name. Do you remember? <sighs> I was right about you. You guys seem to know quite a bit, and now there's no reason to hide anything from you anymore. Let's dig deeper into the case, and of course, I'll tell you a story about Mikhail. All right, let's start with what we know based on the clues the family has. It seems that Firefly isn't a local or an invited guest. In other words, she's a stowaway. She managed to fool me at first. My age must be getting the best of me. But here on the planet of festivities, stowaways are a common sight. You're bound to run into one sooner or later. After the incident, the Hounds wasted no time searching for that girl in both the dreamscape and reality. But here's the thing. We only received bad news, and the trickiest kind at that. She simply vanished, leaving no trace in the dreamscape or reality, as if she had never come to Penacone at all. Huh? Does that mean... Different? Are you suggesting that girl wasn't actually killed? Come on, aren't you a witness in this case? 
let me be frank. This case, actually, is unlike anything the Bloodhound family has dealt with before. Dealt with before? So, death does happen in Panacone, if I understand correctly. You've witnessed it, so there's no need to hide. Even the shiniest city has its dark side. We're all adults here. Surely I don't need to explain too much to you. Confronting the family based on that alone would be naive. Death may occur in sweet dreams. So what? Such events are highly unlikely and only affect a tiny number of people. If you really want to delve deeper into this case, you need to understand the true problem with the family. I guess it's time to tell the story of that Mikhail. You're very perceptive. The Astral Express has received that music box too, right? Do you know the secrets it holds? There's a message. Witness the impossible in the realm of dreams. Find the legacy of the Watchmaker, father of Penacony, And thus the answer to the question, why does life slumber? <laughs> That's the exact wording. Why are you laughing? Wait, did you write it? It's quite poetic. No, but I'm the officer in charge of this case. So how could I not know? I'm sure you must have noticed that this message didn't come from the family. You might have even guessed that the relationship between the family and the watchmaker isn't as close as it seems. That's just our speculation. Actually, it's hard to believe that the father of Panacone and its actual managers are at odds. Now I can assure you that your speculation is absolutely correct. The family has considered the Watchmaker an enemy for a long time, but the Hounds haven't been able to track him down, as he seems to be living only in the characters and stories he created. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered why the family allowed the Watchmaker to send out such a ridiculous message to the outside world, inviting you here and causing chaos? So you want to seize this opportunity to expose the Watchmaker? Well, now you understand why the Oak family authorized the Nameless to assist in the investigation, but kept you in the dark, right? Because the Watchmaker is not the legend of the land of the dreams at all. He's the most shameful stain in the history of Penacone, and he's the root cause of all the anomalies in the dreamscape. You don't get it? Well, I mean, Mikhail, the betrayer of the family, he's the watchmaker. Here we are, Clock Studios Theme Park, the most popular entertainment center in Penacone. Wait, aren't we supposed to be discussing the Watchmaker? I would have expected you to take us to, maybe, a library, or an archive room of sorts, but an amusement park? The culture of a city reflects its history in the most authentic way. To you, it's a fun place, but to me, it's a prison for the planet's past. You know that Penacone used to be the IPC's prison planet, right? All the prisoners were brought here, helping the Garden of Recollection salvage the leaking Memoria from the Macro Void. The prolonged exposure to high concentrations of Memoria caused a unique phenomenon. The dreams of countless prisoners intersected and overlapped, and people started meeting each other in their dreams, living lives that were almost identical to reality. But everything has a price, and sweet dreams are no exception. In the end, the dream world was unable to alleviate the suffering of prisoners in reality. One of the prisoners broke free from the IPC shackles and fought for freedom. He is Hanu, the great leader of Dreamville, the great peacemaker, and the faithful companion of the underdogs. History is always written by the winners, However, it's undeniable that Clocky is an animation that draws from Penacone's actual history. 
These characters not only exist in Dreamville, but also in the distant past. Once you realize this, you'll understand why we're here. There are so many members of the Bloodhound family around here. They just received a lockdown order, supposedly from Sunday himself. Who knows what it's for? <laughs> so many of them. I've never seen anything like this, even when they're tracking down suspects. We don't need to go in. We don't want to draw any unwanted attention inside. We can just talk here. Let's find a quiet spot and continue our conversation. The view here is great, right? We can see everything from here, including Clocky. If all the characters in the animation are based on characters in reality, then Clocky's counterpart is definitely the Watchmaker. In the animation, he's Hanu's partner and one of the founders of Dreamville. Does that mean the Watchmaker was personally involved in that war and sided with Asdana? It was a monumental war for freedom. Hanunu fought alongside a motley crew of masked fools, nameless, history fictionologists, mourning actors, omen vanguards, even visitors from beyond the sky. In the end, they emerged victorious. Among them was the person who would eventually be known as the Watchmaker. But if you do the math, doesn't that mean the Watchmaker was around for several centuries? I'm not sure, but Mikhail was already the Watchmaker when I met him, so maybe he inherited the title. How old are you now, Mr. Officer? I'm 13. Uh, no way! Not even close! Hanunu freed the Frontier Prison, but peace still eluded him. With limited resources, threats from the outside world, and internal conflicts between major prison districts, the future of Ostana was uncertain. It wasn't until the Watchmaker approached the family with the idea of turning the prison into the planet of festivities that Panacone finally gained its name and glory. Thus, he became known as the father of Panacone. Watchmaker betrayed the family? And you said you were his companion, so that means you... No. I'm not his companion, but rather one of his many children. But I am indeed a traitor. Not to the family, but to... Mikhail. What did you do? <sighs> I did nothing. And that's the worst betrayal of all. Just like you, I had close companions. We dedicated ourselves to Penacone. But the Oak family, they set us up. Mikhail was too old to protect his children anymore. So we left the family to find our own path. We were branded traitors of the Harmony. Even though the true traitors were someone else. While they continue to praise the Watchmaker's name in the world, behind closed doors, they condemn him on a pillar of shame. Nevertheless, we wanted to clear his name. We intended to find the real traitor, the one responsible for all this, and restore harmony to Penacone. But we failed. Too much time had passed, and the land of the dreams had become deeply corrupted. After countless fruitless pursuits, I gave up, like a lost dog. The family accepted me and made me an officer, supposedly as a form of forgiveness, but it was actually a punishment. Since then, I've been completely cut off from my partners and my past. As for Mikhail, I heard he died in obscurity, in a place where no one could find him. That's when I realized that the Penacone I once knew would never return. We're truly sorry for what happened. But this is not the end of the story, right? Hmm. Apparently, someone has inherited the title of the Watchmaker 
and has been secretly working against the family all this time. Well, that's one way to look at it. However, only one member has truly inherited the Watchmaker's title. Unfortunately, after all these years, I have no idea who that person is, or if they're even real. Or just Mikhail's lost soul haunting the dreams. So, do you understand why I'm spilling all this info? Because I believe the girl's death must be connected to the Watchmaker's legacy. And at the end of all these mysteries, we will find the answers we are seeking. If it really is Mikhail's ghost, I want to meet him. If only for the last time. For those who despise me could form a line from here all the way to the entrance of the hotel. But those willing to look me in the eye and hear me out? Let's just say, there won't be many. I've told you all I know is a sign of gratitude. Thank you for listening to this old dog. Bark and all. Hmm? Uh, something just happened at the theme park. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, good luck to all of you. How ironic. What's so different between the stowaways rejected by Penacony today and the dream seekers once hailed as pioneers several amber eras ago? Gallagher does have a troubled past, it seems. While Firefly's whereabouts remain a mystery, his stories shed light on our suspicions about the true identity of the Watchmaker, his connection to the family, and the power struggles hidden behind sweet dreams and death. Exactly. Gallagher suggests that the real traitor is someone else, probably within the Oak family. That lines up with what we've gathered so far. Firefly got involved in this mess because of the legacy, and now we're sure that Avengerine's accusations against Acheron are baseless. Uh, you're really into Clocky, huh? He's just a fictional character, not a real person. Speaking of which, that Clocky who only reveals himself to you is quite intriguing. It's a shame we've never met him since then. Now that we've confirmed a lot of our suspicions, let's take a moment to think about the clues we have. Send a message to Welt and see how things are going on his end. Are your companions worried about you? They're just checking up on me. Let's get in and get out. Seems they've made some progress. Looks like we're about to enter the depths of Dewlight Pavilion. It's been a smooth ride. Almost too smooth for a heavily guarded mansion. Let's see if there's anyone waiting to greet us. Something feels off. A grand mansion like this and not a butler or servant in sight. Could it be due to the disruption caused by the emergency? Well, this door is open. Looks like we'll have to investigate ourselves. Let's proceed with caution. Just one moment. Light. I've made myself less noticeable. The crew can explain their presence as authorized by the family, but I can't come up with any excuses for being here. I see. What an interesting technique. The model in the sand pit. It's the golden hour, isn't it? Maybe the heads of the family use that model for discussing important matters. The ones here are different from the rest. There are two sets of them. Looks like outsiders might have passed through here not long ago. 
While there aren't any people in this mansion, they've set up quite a few mimetic guards to patrol this place. Look, it dropped something. A note. Looks like instructions from the butler for the other servants. Hmm. Seems like the mansion's entire workforce were assigned other tasks before Robin's death. It must have been a big project to require that much manpower. The Charmony Festival, perhaps. But no matter what their main priorities are, there should always be someone left at the mansion, right? So you're saying someone deliberately cleared the place out? Yeah, but I don't know why. No one here either. Since no one's around to entertain us, let's make ourselves at home. Stay close to me so that my white can cover you too. As soon as I and the rest of the crew arrived in Penacone, Mr. Sunday and Robin showed up to greet us. I remember hearing something unusual in her voice. And now it seems I was right. Robin believed it was because the Harmony had been tampered with somehow. But as far as I know, there aren't many entities capable of interfering with the power of paths. Meaning... If there really is a traitor within the family, that person must hold a high position or possess unimaginable strength. That would explain why Mr. Sunday has been having such difficulty in catching the traitor. This light cone is securely guarded. It must hold some important memories. According to Robin's interview, despite having performed on so many grand stages, her favorite performance was a, a pretend show she put on with her brother when they were just kids. I wonder how their relationship is now. Growing up brings gains, but also losses. Yeah, time has a way of smoothing things out. The beautiful dreams of youth will eventually fade away. information about Robin, Firefly, and the other victims. I don't see any commonalities among them. Looks like the rumors were right. Death does seem to be targeting random victims. And based on Sunday's notes, he's no stranger to death. He's just surprised that it has resurfaced. Seems neither the Dream Master of Penacone nor this old Oti is happy with Sunday's recent performance. They don't seem to care much about death. Instead, they're more concerned about the Charmony Festival and the Watchmaker. Maybe the other family heads don't think death is a big deal. One thing's for sure there's a lot of internal conflict within the family, and everybody has their own agenda.
Mr. Sunday has done some serious research on his suspects. This traitor must have been causing trouble for the family for a long time. They all seem to be insiders, but I haven't met any of them. Huh? Wait, these characteristics... What is it? No, nothing. Maybe I'm just overthinking things. However, if this traitor really exists, could they be responsible for Firefly and Robin's deaths? Perhaps that's why Sunday is taking this matter so seriously. That's all for now. Nothing more noteworthy. Before coming here, I had all sorts of scenarios in my head about dealing with the family. I did not expect an empty mansion. Watch out. Someone's approaching. I don't think trespassing on forbidden areas is the way to be a guest, Mr. Yang. And... Acheron? The Galaxy Ranger? Our apologies, Mr. Sunday. Uh, nobody came to greet us, so we entered without permission. I hope you can forgive us. But even if there's no one to greet you, you should wait for the host. Don't you agree? Even without the famous Galaxy Ranger. As far as I know, the crew has officially accepted the family's commission, so coming here will be unnecessary for you. On the contrary, that's exactly why we're here, to ask you about the case and gather more information. We don't want any loose ends. Hmm. Well, since you've come with goodwill, I have no reason to show you the door. Rest assured, he hasn't figured out that we went through those documents. While the truth remains a mystery, I'm getting close to it. I assure you that the traitor will soon pay the price. Let's hope justice will prevail soon. I have a question for you, if you don't mind. How did the family come to the conclusion that the murderer was within the family? With all due respect, it's in the IPC's interest to wreak havoc before the Charmony Festival, and the family has every reason to suspect the IPC's involvement. Well, other family heads share the same suspicions as you, but in my opinion, the true murderer would never have drawn as much attention as that ambassador did. Not to mention, I personally shackled him a while ago. However, I'll give you a suggestion regarding your suspicions, Mr. Yang. You should be more cautious of Aventurine. While the wicked can't break through high walls, they can plunge their evil dagger into the heart of the righteous. He's a businessman, not some philanthropist. But right now, he's out there handing out his wealth on the streets. And he went to the Clock Studios theme park all by himself. Who knows what kind of scheme he's cooking up. While the family is dedicated to keeping our guests safe, it might be wise for you to stay alert. You never know what unexpected troubles could arise. <laughs>